when you watch Patrick Mahomes, you know that you're watching something that you've never seen before. You know that you're watching a once in a generational player. Quiet as is kept, that's the same feeling you get to a lesser extent because obviously to me he's not better than him. But that's the same ex- feeling that I get sometimes when I watch uh, Lamar Jackson. I've never seen a player like Lamar Jackson. Same thing, same type of feeling you have when you watch someone like Aaron Donald. It's not just football. Me watching LeBron James, I've never seen a player like LeBron James. Same way I feel watching someone like Steph Curry. I've never seen a player like Steph Curry. These are once in a generation type players. When we watch them, when we see them, we need to respect what we're seeing. And we need to marvel at what we're seeing because the phrase once in a generation is exactly that. You're not going to get this again for a while. You may have players that are close. You may have players that are extremely talented, but once in a generation is a once in a generation. And I'm and the reason why I put Lamar Jackson in that class is because we've never seen a, a mobile player play like Lamar Jackson. We've never seen a player as great, in my opinion, as Patrick Mahomes. Hell, we've never seen a team and a player like Tom Brady and the Patriots. What am I getting to? Caitlin Clark is one of those players. Caitlin Clark is one of those once in a generation players. And we have to respect what we're seeing out of her and what we're seeing from or what the future could hold with Caitlin Clark. So Caitlin Clark sets the W. NCAA scoring record overcome overtaking Kelsey Plum. Caitlin Clark now sits with the record with 3000 or scoring 3590 or 3 oh my goodness 3569 points. Completely clearing uh Kelsey Plum who was 3,527. She needed eight points going into the game. Going into, uh, what, the game two day, two or three days ago against Michigan. She needed eight points. Not only did she score the first eight points of the game, she finished the game with, I think, 49 points. Completely shattering the record. And she still has games to go. Caitlin Clark is the most popular thing in women's sports right now. That is on top of Simone Biles. That's on top of uh, Shakira Richardson, Angel Reese, Asia Wilson. And I'm not saying she's better. I'm talking about popularity. I was watching the Gilbert Arenas podcast or Gil's Arena. And they were talking about uh, Michael Porter Jr.'s comments about women's basketball and the pay gap. I'm not going to go into exactly what they said. Go check that out. And I'm also not going to talk about the pay gap right now. But what I'm going to talk about is... One of the things that Gilbert Arenas and I believe Lexi Brown and Rashid, Rashad McCant, I'm sorry, what they said was the WNBA has a connectability issue at times because you see a lot of players that are older because it's so challenging to make it and to stay in the WNBA because there's so little roster spots that a lot of great young players that may have been incredible in college that 
ultimately don't, doesn't have the space or room in the WNBA, they fall to the wayside. And while the WNBA is increasing year after year in, pop, in pop, popularity, it still misses that connection. It still misses that mark at times. Because while, yes, you have an Asia Wilson, there's not many players in the WNBA that a lot of younger girls connect to, which ultimately hurts the way that you can promote the league, which hurts the way that you grow the league, which hurts the way that, you know, just just the way that the league operates. And you're seeing these women, these 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 women in college, whether that's Caitlin Clark, whether that's Juju Watkins, whether that's uh, Angel Reese, De- DeAsia Fair from Syracuse, or she, yeah, Syracuse. These women are are bigger names than most. D- WNBA, if not all the WNBA. And I'm not saying, I, I get it because of the roster spots and, and the the lack of availability in a lot of areas, why there is a rule that they have to stay in the league for, I think, three years. But But what I'm saying is they're growing all this buzz in college. The WNBA needs to find a way to continue that buzz when they get there. And what we've seen is they've had a very tough time. Remember how popular, and this is no offense to her at all, so this is no offense to any players, but remember how popular Aaliyah Boston was in college and how that popularity is nowhere close to where it is now with, I believe, the Indiana Fever? The only person that right now has exceeded their popularity or matched their popularity from college to the WNBA is Asia Wilson right now. And that just so happens to be the best player in the WNBA and on a team that just won back-to-back championships. Kaylin Clark is... A once in a generation talent. And I just, this batch of players, me and obviously they all aren't going to be able to be drafted at the same time because I think, you know, they got freshmen or whatever, but. This batch of college players, whether that's, like I said, Caitlin Clark, whether that's Angel Reese, whether that's Juju Watkins, whether that's Paige Beckers. This batch. You have to find a way to tap into their popularity now. Moving forward, because I think I don't know if they can't. I don't know if they just haven't figured out a way how. But. That is what's going to take the WNBA over the over the top. Now, don't get me wrong. There is some incredible basketball being played in the WNBA. I'm not here disrespecting the players. I'm not here saying that the players are trash. I'm not saying that. I'm not here saying it's bad basketball. It's not. But what the WNBA ha- has... And the issues I'll say that it has is a marketing issue. I've talked about this ad nauseum. The WNBA should be way bigger than it is, but it has a marketing issue. And the marketing issue isn't just, you know, Instagram post isn't commercials. No, the marketing issue is they have an, a prop maybe because the players have to stay so long in college. That when they build, they build this, they build this, 
cachet, this fandom in college, and it, for, for lack of a better term, goes by the wayside in the WNBA. Because a lot of the play, remember Alexis Morris? I'm not saying she was the greatest WNBA or college player, but she was a popular college player. Last time I checked, she's with the Golden or the Harlem Gold Trotters right now. And that's no offense to her, but what I'm saying is, how did you not, how are you not able to maximize the popularity of Alexis Morris? Now, I understand there were some personal things that she said about the league and about stuff like that, but still. It's incredibly difficult. This is a new age in sports. This is a new age in life. Social media is bigger than ever. It's more important to growth than ever. And the WNBA needs to find a way to maximize that. And that's the way that they'll grow. That's the way that they'll reach another level. But... Congratulations to Caitlin Clark for breaking the NCAA women's all-time scoring record. That was once held by the Vegas Aces' very own Kelsey Plum. Again, about Caitlin, she is a once-in-a-generational player. I've seen a lot of jokes about, you know, she's doing this in the W, uh, WNCAA, John just take it to the men's side. She couldn't she couldn't do this in the NBA. These are from the same people that couldn't even make their high school team. Congratulations to Caitlin Clark for breaking the record and shattering the record because again she still has games to go. Oh man, you stayed to the end of the video. I appreciate you. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss any content from your boy. You can also go back and watch past episodes, past clips, and don't forget that the Unpopular Podcast new episodes drop every Wednesday and Saturday. Appreciate you.